What is going on everybody and welcome to a new tutorial series. This tutorial series is with the Raspberry Pi which is a credit card size, it's a very thick credit card, but a credit card sized mini computer. So what this can do is basically anything a computer can do for you but obviously it has two things going for it. One is the size of course and two is the readily accessible GPIO pins which we can use to do all kinds of things like control other robotics types of stuff, you know, like turn on and off lights, move servos. Um, we can also just take in sensor data, all kinds of stuff that we can do with that. And that's what makes this device super powerful. It also just doesn't take that much um, electricity. And obviously just due to its size, you can kind of stuff it in all kinds of cool places. So that's the Raspberry Pi. Now the first thing, it's kind of a weird situation where when you first get the Raspberry Pi, the question on your mind is like, what do I even do with this? As if there's nothing you can even think of to do with it. And then as time goes on, it's actually a paralyzingly large number of things that you can do with a Raspberry Pi. Um, so for me, I've done a whole bunch of stuff. I've put um, a computer in my car. I've done robotics stuff. Um, I've clustered them together. You can even actually see the cluster in the back there. That's a bunch of Raspberry Pis. <laughs> I've got a ton of these things. I've used them for... Um, cameras like security cameras around the house and I've used them just for simple kind of just headless machines that just do operations for me that I want to be like always running because here's the thing you can you know obviously you can compute in the cloud but you can also compute locally and the only thing that stops local computer computing normally and the reason why I use the cloud is when you have things like a power outage or something like that whereas a Raspberry Pi you can run it on backup power where like a computer on the most backup power will last maybe five minutes maybe usually more like 10 to 30 seconds <laughs> uh, whereas a Raspberry Pi can actually last about 30 minutes or so on, on backup power so anyway it just draws such a small amount of power so anyways that's the Raspberry Pi that's some stuff that you can do with it let's talk about the Raspberry Pi itself and then some of the things that you're going to need for this tutorial series. So what we have here, this is a Raspberry Pi Model B. Um, it's actually a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. So, um, and actually, no, this is actually, this one's a 3, I think. This is the latest version, yeah. This is actually a 3. Most of what I have are actually 2s, but this is the latest one. This will probably be the latest model for a while. I think they came out and said that they're not really thinking of making another one yet. So anyway, this should be it for a while, but you can have any of the different versions of the Model B. Uh, the only things that change, sometimes some of the peripheral stuff changes, but the most important thing is that these GPIO pins, and GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. These GPIO pins, the order, they might add more like down the line, although they are running out of space. Um, they do not change in the order or the ID. So they're always going to be the exact same ID, except for the bottom ones might be new and um, that the other Model Bs don't have. Um, I don't think I have a, a really old Raspberry Pi Model B that doesn't have as many pins. This one has 40. It's also got like one gig of RAM. Um, it's got, this one has a quad core processor. Most of them just have like a single arm processor. Um, but yeah, so that's the Raspberry Pi. Now let's talk about some of the uh, additional things that you're going to need. So I'm just going to move this over. Um, so the main thing that we're going to need additionally will be a breadboard. So a breadboard is just a really quick way to kind of um, test and develop things with uh, circuits. So we're going to be using that with the GPIO pins. So try to get one of those. Although really the essentials for the Raspberry Pi, I mean just getting it, setting it up, you're just going to need the, the Raspberry Pi obviously itself. You're going to need at least a, uh, like a 1 amp or 1000 milliamp power supply. This is like a cell phone charger. It's a micro USB. So the actual power is uh, this right here. So that's your actual power supply to the Raspberry Pi. You actually can supp also supply power via the uh, GPIO pins as well, but we're not really going to deal with that for now. Um, so the Raspberry Pi, power supply, and then um, an SD card. Generally, it's going to be a micro SD. This is a regular SD card, but this is actually an adapter. So the micro SD card goes inside it. So this one is, um, and I'm not even 100, I'm pretty sure you could use a 128 gigabyte micro SD card, but I'm not 100% certain, but I don't see why not. But some older, I bet maybe the older Pies wouldn't let you. Anyway, regardless, um, yeah, so you'll want a micro SD card. This one is 128. I'm not actually going to be using it. I just grabbed one that was around. But 
at least 8 gigabytes, but if you ask me, really, 16 gigabytes is what you should use, or 16 or larger. Um, but yeah, so make sure you have a micro SD card or a full SD card. It depends on which Raspberry Pi you have. Um, the later versions, the SD card goes in this right here. And um, that's obviously only going to accept a micro SD card. That's not going to accept the full one. But the older Raspberry Pi Model Bs actually want a full-sized SD card. Okay, so for the Raspberry Pi, basically, you just need those things. You're also going to need like a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor. And these, those three things you'll only need temporarily. You're not always going to need those things. So you can just borrow them from a computer around your house. Um, now let's talk about some of the things we're going to need later in the series. So initially, you just need the Pi, power supply, and a micro SD card. Um, but then later, we're going to be getting into the GPIO pins, which is really the value of the Raspberry Pi. Um, so you, you probably should just go ahead and buy the other things that we're going to be using. So like I said before, the breadboard. Um, we'll talk more about how a breadboard works. Uh, they might look somewhat different from this one, um, but generally they're going to look like this, where they've got a row here, a row here. Um, actually, officially, this would be more like a column, I suppose. Anyway, um, something there, something there, and then a bunch in the kind of middle separated usually, but not always, and these will be separated as well. So anyways, um, get a breadboard. Other than that, we're also going to need quite a few other things. So for example, um, this these are jumper wires, and these are, I'm going to try to stay out of my light there so you can see, but these are male to female, or female to male, jumper wires you really can't see the uh, pin one of them has a pin the other one it, like that's the male part and then so for example this is your male this is your female end so the male end goes on the female end so get about at least 10 of them but usually you can just buy like a kit or something that has like a hundred of these things and while you're at it you could also just get one that has female to female female to male male to male just get a bunch of them for this tutorial series um, at least as far out as I've kind of planned, um, you'll only need the male to female because basically the male end goes in the breadboard, the female end goes onto the GPIO pins themselves, and you're good to go. So get about 10 of those. Um, next we need, um, we're going to use an LED lights. So in this series, we're going to use three. We're going to use a green, yellow, and a red. You don't have to use those colors. You could get different ones. It doesn't really matter. Um, but get some LED lights. You should probably get more than three because not always do they work. Um, and they're just of varying quality. They're like a super cheap mass-produced product that doesn't always <laughs> meet standards. Um, next, we're going to need about-ish six resistors, kind of like the male-to-female um, jumper wires, though. You probably should just get a kit of varying sizes because you're going to need uh, resistors fairly frequently. Um, for this tutorial series, basically, you, you could get by with six 1K ohm resistors. Um, basically, what we absolutely need, you're going to need at least one 1K, one 2K, and then three, somewhere between 300 and 1K ohm resistance. Um, the reason why we need those is just either for the sensor, we're going to use a distance sensor, or the LED bulbs themselves because they like to draw more power than the Raspberry Pi wants to um, take. So those are your resistors. Um, let me think here. Finally, we've got the distance sensor. This is officially the HCSRO4. If I flip it around, you can actually read it on there. It's noted there. Breaking stuff. <laughs> anyway, the HCSRO4. Uh, you're only going to need one of those, but I would recommend you just go ahead and get at least two because generally the thing that you're going to use this distance sensor for is for like a, a robotic car. So it's useful to have one in the front, one in the rear. Uh, we're not going to do that in this series, but as we get further on, I'm going to link to a series that I've already done that uses that. Um, so it could be wise to go ahead and just get two of those. Um, other than that, you should be good to go. One last thing though, just because sometimes computers come and they don't have SD slots, at least my computer doesn't. If you custom build, you probably didn't get an SD card reader, because why? Um, anyway, um, you can buy these like little USB ones. So this is just like a USB SD card reader, and you can actually stick um, the SD cards in there and then plug it in. So if you don't have an SD card reader, uh, you'll probably want to get one of these, because it's super handy to have around if you don't have an SD card reader. But it seems like most consumer-bought computers still nowadays 
do come with SD cards, but just be careful. Also, I forgot to mention that uh, we'll also be briefly using the Raspberry Pi camera module. It's not absolutely essential for this series that you have it, uh, but if you want it, you can get it. Also, we use it in a lot of the other projects that I've already done on the um, on YouTube and also on pythonprogramming.net. So if you want to follow along with that, uh, you can get it. It's just really like the easiest sensor to use with the Raspberry Pi, just because it's got its own special port and everything's kind of already set up for you. Anyway, just want to throw that in there because I forgot to mention it uh, on the original recording. So, anyway, um, that's that. That's the introduction to the Raspberry Pi, all the parts that you're going to need and all that. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is run through the actual setup of the Raspberry Pi on your, um, on your computer and then also the SD card for your Raspberry Pi.